Hello and welcome to our short series on the holy season of Lent. We hope these will be really helpful to you as you journey through that season. And so may God bless you and may you journey well. So my prayer practice, for me, how prayer works for me is I feel like I'm praying all the time. But I have to start every day in quiet. I get up before anybody else. I have my little spot. I mean, I did this. I was single for, you know, until I was 49 years old, so I didn't need to have a special spot because the house was mine. But um, uh, I have to have that quiet um, and do some reading. Um, I do just some quiet sitting, uh, and I do some journaling. So for me, that is, um, if I don't have that, like if I oversleep, I don't tend to oversleep, but if I did, or something happened, like it, it's jarring to my day to not have that, really jarring to my day. Some days I'm there for 20 minutes, some days I'm there for 40 minutes, you know, it really, it really varies, the time. But the, the elements are the same. So something to read, the daily scriptures I use, give us this day. Um, you know, you could use whatever. Um, something to just time, time to close the eyes, just be quiet, kind of meditate. And then the time to write in my journal. So, My current prayer practice is very much interworked into my day. Because I find if I don't make time to talk to God, it just doesn't happen. It's one of those things like I incorporate just like you brush your teeth every day. So a lot of times I found on my drive to work, that's like my key like quiet moment. I'm usually the person that like blasts the music in the car because I go to work at like oh dark 30. So I've given up listening to music for 10 minutes on my car ride and I just like lift up my day to God. And that's like my key prayer moment that I'm really present. I'm always talking to him throughout the day, but that key moment is usually like the start of my day, right before I get to work and everything gets crazy. Right now, my prayer practice is in the morning. I'm not usually a morning person, but that's when I have a best routine. And I've built in praying with a piece of the gospel. And there's a great like, little reflection book. And sometimes those pre-made tools help me out. Um, to kind of keep me on focus, keep me a task. And so just praying with the gospel, discover, you know, who Jesus is, um, you know, maybe meditative prayer to see, you know, put myself in the passage to see what Jesus might be telling me, uh, and then looking to my day ahead to say, you know, Jesus, what do you want me to do and how do you want me to do it? And I think the most important part at the end is at some point they always giving some gratitude to God. Usually, I mean, I can't speak for a day, but a lot of times it's like the first thing I think of in the morning is like, I, I say goodbye to him, I get in my car, and that's usually the time where I'm like, Lord, please let Dave have a good day. Please keep him safe. Please be with his school. You know, help them to hear what they need to hear from him today. You know, and that's usually like my one key is to like lift up my day also as like a sacrifice for his day. Um, so that's been one of the key things is also when I'm giving up my day to God that I'm also mentioning Dave and also thinking of him and how his day will be. Um, um, so there's sometimes when we're like running around or things are busy, or especially when we're angry at each other, and we'll just take a moment and we'll say the memorare together. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we have a little booklet about um, prayers for spouses, so praying for each other as, as a couple. Um, you know, whenever I, I have the opportunity to go to adoration, I make sure that I have a prayer for Teresa. Or if I know that something is going on for work, and she texts me throughout the day, and she's saying something's really stressful, that I can just make sure to take a second to just pray for her, and God, who knows what she needs best, just to give her the graces that she needs at that that moment. I try and pray to Rosary as much as I can. I'm not very contemplative. I don't do contemplative prayer very much. I stick to pretty much the standard stuff. But I try and keep as much of my day focused on Jesus. And that in and of itself is a prayer. It's something I enjoy. For prayer, I pray in the morning and I pray at night mainly. Okay, so um, greeting God saying thank you. Um, I, you know, thank you for a good night's sleep. Uh, thank you for my family. So it's more of a prayer of gratitude after uh, a good night's sleep. Prayer at the, before I go to bed, um, praying, praying and reflecting on the day. So 
asking the Lord for forgiveness for my sins throughout the day when I wasn't a Christian, didn't act as a, as a Christian, didn't act as Jesus did. Um, as I get older, and I'm sure as everyone gets older, we always, I think our prayer for asking for forgiveness is more, uh, is more, uh, from my experience, it's, it's been more um, noticeable in my life, uh, more um, prevalent. Um, prayer to me is a personal communication. It's, it's a personal action, interaction with God. Um, some of my prayers do include um, asking God and Jesus for strength. Um, I, also, I also pray to saints through intercession, pray to, to Mother Mary. Uh, that's the, that's a, a good go-to. Uh, Mary, uh, she, Jesus doesn't deny his mother, his earthly mother. So, um, and that was instilled at me in, in a young age from my mother. She's very devout to, to, to Mary. Uh, so prayer in my life began very early, and I thank God for the foundation I had with my parents. Um, we were we were taught to pray, pray the rosary, family prayer, pray pray at um, dinner, you know, pray before we eat, and I try to instill that and pass that along to my children as well. Be thankful, be thankful for the food we have. Be thankful, and give grace to God, saying thank you for the ability to earn, in order to provide for my family. Um, and then also in those prayers, we, we also uh, recognize those who do not have a meal to share and do not have people to share them with. And there's it's a lot in, this, in the Capital District and in the world in general. So we pray for that. Uh. Like I have, like the other day, I got a couple books out. That books that I just keep near my chair that I just pick up. And some of them I've, you know, read already, uh, but just when I need to be thoughtful or to think about something, I pick one of those up and, and read it. So one of them is Brother Mickey McGrath, who I love to read his things. And the other one that's next to my chair is Sister Ann Bryan Simolan's book. So I do a lot of reading, like I said, reading. Sure, I'm, I'm not so into deep things, but easy to read things that are spiritual and um, my, you know, I find myself praying all at different times in the car, always at night because that's what I learned from my mother. She never went to sleep unless she'd said her prayers no matter where she was. And um, so I, different times of the day and, and a lot of times just looking on online and finding, you know, I find things on there, the prayers on there that are um, that I really enjoy uh, reading and everything. So, uh, Like we know, where two or three or more are gathered, uh, there is God. And I think right now what our world is lacking is real connection. And we can get that through directly praying to God without anyone else around. And I find that's very powerful and it's supplemented really well, I find, in my own practice when I pray with someone else. I started praying the rosary in college and found praying the rosary to be one of my favorite ways of communicating with God. However, um, through my Protestant friends, I also became very comfortable with popcorn prayer, if that's the right term for it. That's what we called it, where you kind of throw out different prayer petitions to God as they come to you. So it might mean sitting alone in the chapel and with just a stream of thoughts to share with God. And my prayer practice really became most formed by attending daily Mass. I didn't even know that was a thing. 
when I was growing up, I thought Mass was only held on Sundays. And then I began to grow in my faith, uh, much thanks to the Prasadi Fellowship, and learned about daily Mass, and so through the Mass and Rosary, and just writing or out loud or quietly speaking prayers to God, I find I'm able to really build a close relationship with God.